On today's show, how can the Minnesota Timberwolves extend this series? How can the Mavericks close it out? We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked on NBA. Let's go. You are Locked on NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, you are locked on to the NBA. My name is Nick Engstead, host of the Locked On Mavericks Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show, making Locked On NBA your first listen today, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform, leave a five-star review, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's Guaranteed 150 bucks with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. And joining me from the great Lockdown Bulls podcast, what you got for me, Pat, the designer? Somewhere in the world, somebody just scored on the current defensive player of the year yet again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, I, I was defending him for a while. And then I'm like, it's a lot of fucking stuff. <laughs> like, it's a, like you, can't, you can't be the DPOY and like you're known for your help defense. Like, remember that? Remember when Kevin Durant was on Bill Simmons' podcast one time? And he's like, he's the defensive player of the year and I can score on him whenever I want. You're, you're, Ke- you're Kevin Durant, dude. You- <laughs> so you know that you are Kevin Durant. Like, a, that's everybody at this you point. Score you're, on everybody, man. Like, <laughs> you're Daniel Gafford. <laughs> you're you're Maxi Kleba. The law from Luca again. <laughs> the Mavs are up 3-1 against the Timberwolves. We'll talk about the Timberwolves side. How can they extend it? We'll play Count It Up, where we count out the most interesting, fun things in the NBA, including Ty Lu signing a contract extension. Is he worth being one of the highest paid coaches in the NBA? Uh, a Dallas Cowboy does something questionable at the Mavericks game. They know. Questionable. And uh, we'll talk about more and count it up. Again, the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. But let's start here. The Dallas Mavericks. How can they close it out? The Dallas Mavericks are in a position now where they have to respond to what happened in game four. And I thought what was interesting about their game four loss is that it came down to exactly what had gotten them. Three wins (laughs) to start the series. Fourth quarter execution. And their fourth quarter execution down the stretch was not good. They had some really bad moments and moments that we just had not been used to seeing from Luca and Kyrie. Kyrie had a turnover with 30 seconds left. Luca missed a free throw with like 20 with 13 seconds left. You had bad defensive adjustments. Luca and Kyrie have been locked in defensively and there's some bad defensive, you know, rotations, bad defensive setups and things like that. And the fourth quarter execution has gotten the Mavericks to where they are, out executing the the Timberwolves in 1, 2 and 3. And then in four, it kind of came back to bite them a little bit. Do you think that this Dallas Mavericks team will be the first one to lose a 3-0 lead? Or did you not see enough from the from the Timberwolves in game four? I mean, listen, there there is a and I I don't want to undersell this, especially as we head into the next topic, but like there, there's a real chance that this is a team that could make this a series again in Minnesota. But the one thing that I don't want to see the Mavs do is let this one game change the identity of who they are. A lot of the things that put Minnesota over the top in this game were things that, listen, like you you talked about the fourth quarter execution, but realistically, I look at the offense that Minnesota was able to put up and, and the players that were able to add to that. There was still some really good defense being played down the stretch. I thought P.J. still was very close on Cat on some of those threes. I thought that Gafford still protected the paint relatively well as as well as you can in in those moments where you know guys start to turn up you're don't let what minnesota did change who change the identity that got you up 3-0 because i do think that you have the two players that can break one of those elite defenses and in luka Doncic and kyrie irving where Listen, yeah, defensively, are, are is Minnesota still one of the best in the league? 100%. The team you're heading up to, if you do get to the finals in Boston, will be that same stretch. But you got two game breakers where it doesn't matter what defense you throw at them. They find a way to get the job done. Just keep everybody involved on the offensive end and, and keep yourselves focused and locked in. That's my thing. Luka, like you mentioned, Luka and Kyrie have been more locked in defensively 
than I think I've ever seen. And I think it's because they taste blood in the water. And all that does at this point is take guys who are natural defensive guys like DJJ, Daniel Gafford, PJ Washington and say, yo, they're locked in. There's nobody that can get, that can score on us down the stretch. And I think that's what we saw through the first three. Don't change your identity going into game five, because you feel like we need to switch something up because they may have figured something out. How about the same number of points scored in game four and in game one by the Timberwolves? The Mavs win game one, they lose game four. Yeah. Same exact offensive rating for the Timberwolves, like 112, which is not that great, but 112 in game four and in game one. Mavs win one, they lose they lose another because of offensive execution d- down the stretch. Yeah. Um, one of the big changes that the Timberwolves made was the Jaden McDaniels and Anthony Edwards. Jaden McDaniels had been guarding Luka Doncic the whole, the whole first three games, basically. Anthony Edwards had been guarding Kyrie the first three games. Remember, uh, you know, the interview before the it series started. <laughs> he said, he said, Kyrie's my matchup. And then immediately he comes in and, and all of a sudden, uh, and Kyrie drops 30 on him three times. Yeah. Now they switched it for game four. Did the switch work on, on Luka and Kyrie? <sighs> I think the switch worked more so for the Timberwolves. I said this in when game one happened. I, did we do locked on for game? Oh, we didn't. We we switched days because you were there. Uh, when 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 game one happened, I said I thought Anthony Edwards did a masterful job defensively in the second half guarding Kyrie Irving. Kyrie got a lot of those points in the first half. In the second half, I thought he did a really good job guarding him. Kyrie ends up going one for nine, but Anthony Edwards absolutely fell off a mountain offensively. And the first Mm. thing I said was they will lose this series. If he continues to guard Kyrie, not to say that Anthony Edwards cannot guard Kyrie and cannot make things difficult for Kyrie. But what it does is it, it immediately tires him out and it basically evaporates any offense that he's been able to create through these first three games has been very sporadic because He's sitting there trying to like, I have to figure out how to stop this dude on one end. What did Kevin Garnett say when <laughs> when Jordan went off on him? He's like, you know how you feel when you're always on defense? That's how Ant has looked <laughs> through much of this series. It, it looks like he's yeah. been on defense more times than not because he's trying to keep up with one of the best guards to ever handle a basketball. I think this switch does more for Minnesota than it does in an effect of the uh, uh, um, the the Dallas Mavericks offensively. It did work for one game, but I don't think, listen, Jaden McDaniels can't hold Kyrie. Nobody's sitting here thinking that that's a, a likely scenario there, but what it does is it opens things up offensively for Minnesota. Yeah, it's it's it slowed them down a little bit. It may have it may have changed a little bit on it, and it's kind of interesting because Ant had to work a little less guarding Luca because he runs into so many screens, and you can just yeah. you you switch on the screen, and then all of a sudden you're just like there standing like, like standing there. Uh, but I think the Mavs can make him work a little bit. I think that yeah, Kyrie will not have he will not have the same kind of game he had in Game Four. I just don't think that will happen. I don't think it was Jaden McDaniels completely changed what you know completely stopped Kyrie. In any way, I, I don't think that. And I think the Mavs will figure out another way to, to win one more game. That's all they have to do is win one more. Yeah. Now, kind, of, kind of the underlying big story, though, coming out of that game was the absence of Derek Lively. Derek Lively, if you have not paid attention to the Mavericks, has become, honestly, the third most important player for the Mavericks. Doesn't even start. Doesn't even start. <laughs> Comes yeah. off the bench now for the Mavs. But his absence was absolutely massive in that game. You saw it, you know, on, uh, you saw it in a bunch of just key, key areas. Defensively, He's been one of their best rim protectors. Rim defers. He like he alters a bunch of shots, defers a bunch of shots. He's been their best rebounder so far in the postseason. He's had a bunch of double doubles. He's been their best plus minus guy. When he's on the court, they outscore the other team because they get that advantage. He's been their best guy in the short roll where, where he gets the ball out of a, a pick and roll and then he passes it out to the right player or makes the right decision every single time. And as a 20-year-old rookie, it's amazing to see that decision making. But what did you see from um, Derek Lively's absence from game four? Well, listen, defensively, it opens things up down low, right? That That's really the biggest change that I saw. It, it looked like there was less of a fear to attack the bucket where they've kind of been through the first three games. Uh, okay, we need to kind of figure out how we can get things going down low, but always have somebody ready to shoot on the outside because more than likely... I'm going to have to deal with Lively or Gafford or whoever it is down there. I think it just changes up kind of how uh, uh, Minnesota wants to attack the rack and how Minnesota really can get to get to their spots. You know what I'm saying? I think in that last game, you saw a lot more looks where you're sitting there going, okay, like, I, I haven't seen that three open as much. I, I saw that that nice play where uh, Anthony Edwards, it, it's a dagger three, kicks it out to Carl Anthony Towns, left side corner, yeah. and uh, um, 
slow-mo basically sets the screen, oh. opens it up, knocks it down, nice. bang. Now we're talking about a completely different ball game. We haven't seen that really through three games now. Uh, uh, um, Cat has been struggling to shoot the basketball, and so that that's also plays into it. But you haven't seen those open looks like that because there's been a lot easier time. I know where my matchup is, and I know if he gets down here in the paint, the kickout's not going to be nearly as easy. So I think that it changes how we saw Minnesota operate in the paint, how we saw them kicking the ball back out to their shooters on the perimeter, and it just it changed the middle of the court for them. It absolutely did. Coming up, let's talk about what changed for the Timberwolves. How can they extend the series? And who's more of a problem for Minnesota? Gobert or Towns? Talk about that. Come on. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook has all kinds of props and odds that you can use to get in on, on the action, have some fun playing and watching sports. Go check out FanDuel.com slash locked on. You get a $150 in bonus bets guaranteed with any winning $5 bet. Check it out. Minnesota, four and a half point favorite at home in game five. That, that is interesting to me. They gave him the extra point and a half there uh, when they did, weren't giving the Mavericks the full three. It's because he offered him the shoes. It's because he offered him the shoes. <laughs> Dallas Mavericks minus 560 to win the series. Now that's even gone down a little bit. So those are some pretty good odds. You can still get to have, have the Mavs win the series. Timberwolves plus 420 to win the series. So you can nice. get, you can get, you can get some, uh, get some odds in there. Don't smoke that bet. Go ahead and check out fanduelcom slash locked on and uh, go ahead and put that $5 bet down. If you win, you get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Check it out. fanduelcom slash locked on. Well done. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown NBA. Being an everyday or listening every day, we appreciate each and every one of you. We have a daily Lockdown show that covers your team. Check the link in the description to find a show that covers your team every day. All right, Pat, we're talking about the Mavs versus Timberwolves Western Conference Finals. It's the only game still playing. Celtics just hanging out, waiting for the, these guys. As always. The Timberwolves. What can the Timberwolves do to extend the series? What did you see from the Timberwolves that made you think, all right, they can they can extend this and make it longer than five games. Anthony Edwards got help. Um, I think that we talked about a portion of it, right? You like take him other off of Kyrie. Scored or he? Yeah, he got, no, like, legitimately, like <laughs> the other players scored. No, but, but I think we talk about it in the in the sense of um, what, what we mentioned, right? The switch that you made defensively with Jaden McDaniels and, and Anthony Edwards. I think that was the biggest thing. It's a change that should have been made after game one. There's no way you and realistically speaking, and, and you have to take into account, mo uh, I don't believe anyone on this team has been to the Western Conference Finals before. Conley, if I'm not Conley mistaken, got, Conley got Conley, swept. Mike Conley. Mike Conley has been. So, but outside of that, right, No, nobody else on this team has been to the Western Conference Finals before. You're now playing longer into a season that you've ever played. Uh, unless Rudy's been there. Maybe that's the, that's the only other one I could think. Maybe Rudy nope. got to a list. No? no. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, but uh, uh, you're playing longer than you've ever played. You have to take your player's stamina into account. Of course, Ant wants the matchup, but you knew after watching game one, he's going to die out there if he's got to chase Kyrie every single game. Guess what? We've kind of seen that effect happen. On the flip side of that, I'd be fine with Ant guarding Kyrie and giving you the 23, 24 points per game production that you've seen out of him through the first three if for the love of God, Carl Anthony Towns found a way <laughs> to be useful on a basketball court for more than one game. And this is irritating my one quarter. So I mean, <laughs> my God, dude, like it's, it's so tough because you see Ant out there giving everything, trying to do everything, trying to make every play overextending in some situations. And I'm just sitting there going, okay, where's the help? Where's the, I'm the best shooting big of all time. You know, when you can't claim to be the best shooting big of all time, where I don't care about your percentages anymore because percentage-wise, he is the best shooting big of all time. When you can't do it when the moments matter. When you can't knock down threes in the important moments. You know what's 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 cool about, for the people listening, uh, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, that guy that's sitting behind uh, Nick back there, he was able to knock <laughs> down those three-pointers when the moments mattered. He was able to knock down those three-pointers in the Western Conference Finals. He was able to knock down those three-pointers in the NBA Finals. Or, Carl Anthony Towns, if you don't wake up, it is over. <laughs> or how about the thing that made Dirk, and I, I'm far be it for me to ever like compare 
Towns and Dirk at this point. But the thing about Dirk is he could break you down off the, off the dribble. He could break you down on a post up and score when given the ball. And and Towns has struggled with that in this series. He struggled with the defense of PJ Washington. That's what he's supposed him. to be able to do too. You know what I mean? He, <laughs> he's got guard skills. He wants yeah. to be a guard. You can tell yeah. at times he's driven to the rim and gotten some really good, um, got some really good stuff at the rim. But he doesn't have the like break you down and, and hit a jumper that you'd want that second star to be. It's kind of a weird thing that the Mavs had with Porzingis where he can do a bunch of stuff, do a lot of things, but if you give him the ball in certain certain situations, he can't get you a bucket everywhere. And that's what makes a superstar now in today's NBA is you've got to be able to answer a bunch of questions that are presented at you in any given possession. And so uh, I think the, I think P.J. Washington's done a good job defending him, but when Towns started scoring, it was because he was hitting some open threes. The Mavs made yeah. some mistakes and left him open, and he finally knocked down those threes. He's been taking 1,500 shots a game, I've heard. And so, like, at least he's he's not like, <laughs> the biggest eye roll I've ever seen. Bro, oh, you, <laughs> know, you know what kills me about it is he had his best shooting performance after he said it, so now everyone's going to believe now it. Now it's like, okay. Now it's like, oh, 1,500 threes a game. Ah, he's doing it. Ah, oh, shut up. I mean, if you think about it, between warm-ups and a game, and, like, I mean, you start, it starts adding up. Shoot, You do shoot-around, like, I don't know. To me, 1500 I was like, that sounds like a lot, but he does an extra shooting session for like an hour or two. But I think, it, it, I believe, yeah, I believe Charles Barkley said this. If you're taking 1500 threes a game or a day, when are you working on the rest of your game? Because the three point shot. Shots. Not, he, just, he just said shots. I don't think he said threes. He, well, listen. I, it seems like it's whether, all threes because whether whether it is or whether it is or not, he's got to work on more of the breaking down th those kind of moves because that's exactly. going to take him to that next level. Yeah, and and that's and that's my problem with Carl Anthony Towns right now is, well, I, I you got to be able to do something else outside of the three. I love that that's your claim to fame, and it's amazing when it falls. And guess what? The one game you win is the game where your three pointers fell. But you've got to find a way to get yourself involved in the game at other aspects. At a minimum, like you did in this game, get downhill, get some fouls drawn on you, pump fake for the love of God. He's the only big I've ever seen that doesn't pump fake. Like, <laughs> there's, been, there's been a lot of talk about Rudy Gobert, though. Lots by Draymond Green. He's he's made, he's made many. <laughs> Mostly. He's, He's been made many. But then there's other people that have said, oh, they've got to do this. They've got to play hit him off the floor. they got to do this. Who's been a bigger problem for Minnesota, Gobert or Towns? I know we just went off on Towns. <laughs> easy. Uh, I mean, listen, it, it, to me, it is Carl Anthony Towns just because the problem for me with Rudy Gobert is expectations. Uh, when you win defensive player of the year, I expect Four you to times. have more than more than six blocks through the last five games. He's got four in this series. You know what I mean? I expect Which you to be. You shouldn't be not, the best. Blocks are not all defense. I mean, that's not the. What no, the but you know, you know what the the thing about and and I said this. The reason why I I was you know I'm okay with Rudy Gobert winning it. Wemby could have won this award for me as well. Was because I think you have to scheme your team differently when you're playing one of those guys. I can't sit there and say I'm a drive to the bucket and just kill you all day if I got Rudy Gobert standing down there. The problem with that is I have Luca on my team. I have Kyrie on my team. I can find a way to get Rudy Gobert out of the paint. I can do a lot of different things that can get Rudy Gobert out of the paint. And even if he's not out of the paint, the mid range is so deadly. I can draw you out because now you're in a fear. I'm going to knock down a mid-range shot. The three-point shot is so deadly. We saw how Luca handled that when he ends up switching that on the three-point line, which is horrible switch by Jaden. Like, we got to stop that. <laughs> he knew it as he, like, ran back. I don't know if His you've face. seen face the zoom in. It. But I would still say Cat is, the, Cat is the biggest problem because Rudy, to me, played no different yesterday, and they He's found the a way to He's win. The same. He's the same. He's the same. And this series has come down to when the two stars on either team execute better than the other two stars, they win. Yeah. It's literally it. Score. Like, get like get the buckets. It, this series is really not that hard because everything else is working in the favor of those teams. And, yeah, I, I think that with, with with Towns now, I think he's he's got to step up. It's got He's got to have the same kind of game that he had in game four, uh, get something to go. The Mavs have to step up defensively because they let him – get some wide open threes and that really got him going a little bit late in the game, but he, he made three of them in the last, what, five minutes of the fourth quarter, <laughs> yeah. three of those threes. And so, yeah, I, I'm curious to see how they adjust on there. Is there anything else on Minnesota that you see that they need to do to extend the series or anybody else that needs to step up in any way? Nas Reed didn't really have any good games at in, in Dallas. So maybe it's a big Nas Reed game in game five. 
I think that's the one. I mean, you look at you look at uh, um, how Nas Reed has kind of played over this series, and that's the guy that you've been looking for. It, it, Anthony just needs one. I don't know why I called him Anthony. I felt weird. Uh, Ant just needs one. Which one uh, exactly. Uh, Ant just needs one one guy to step up with him. And I think that at this point, and, and I'll ask you this: Is Cat being any different kind of player than we've seen him be over his career? I need to look at Nas Reed. I need Nas Reed to be that second guy because I don't believe that Cat can be that second guy. And I think if you head into this next game relying on him being that second guy, you're probably going home after that. They need somebody to hit the, to knock down the open shots that the Mavs will have to give them because you, you have to respect the drives from Anthony Edwards. You have to sort of respect Rudy Gobert at the rim. You have to respect a couple of things here and there. And then you are somebody's going to get open. And Nas has yeah. been open the first three games. He didn't really get too many shots in game four. Towns got open. Towns is the one that, that got open. Somebody's going to be open. They got to knock down the shots. And I think that's that's the difference. It's the stars. And then who hits the open shots? Who you know? Because the defenses are both going to show up. Both these teams are great defenses. And uh, it's been awesome to watch these two. Coming up, let's talk about Tyron Lue and count it up, where we count up the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. Is he worth being one of the top paid coaches? Talk about that and more. Coming up. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Locked On NBA. Let's talk Count It Up, where we count out the most interesting, fun things in the NBA. It's Big Chicken, baby. Zion Williams and Porn Stone. Take that. Count it up. 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 Los Angeles Clippers of Anaheim signed Ty Lue to a five-year contract worth $70 million, making him one of the highest-paid coaches in the NBA. My question is simply this. Count it up. Is he worth being one of the highest-paid coaches in the NBA? Four seasons with the Clippers. He's got about a, a 58% win percentage. Made one Western Conference Finals. Kawhi was hurt by the end of that one. Missed the playoffs the second year. Missed or lost in the first round the next two years, but Kawhi was hurt in both. Paul George was hurt in, in 2023. He's had the injuries. They seem to have underperformed, but it, mostly be due to injuries. Ty Lue, is he worth being one of the highest paid head coaches? Yeah, because I think Ty Lue is one of the few coaches left in the NBA that still, uh, that still schemes his team to victory uh, as much as he can. Um, the, the, the injury bug that Ty Lue has dealt with is unheard of. I mean, my God, like he he basically went through Kawhi Leonard going through load management for the first entire time he's been there. Um, he's dealt except with Paul Except for this George. past year. Except for they did except, not load manage this past year. Except, except for this past year. And it basically took the NBA saying, stop that. For him to finally be able to. to hey, you want to win get, anything? You want to win any awards? <laughs> You know what I mean? So for him to finally be able to get Kawhi Leonard for most of the season, doesn't get him for the playoffs. Uh, I think that he's done a phenomenal job um, coaching with what he's had, coaching with the ups and downs, coaching in a situation where you don't know who's actually going to be in and who's going to be out on a night-in, night-out basis. I think that Ty Lue is one of the top five coaches in the NBA right now. And I, as far as an actual, it's not just going to take my guys being here for us to find a way to win. That would help, but I can do it without it. Now I'm going to take count it up completely literally. Does Ty Lue get this level of contract? Five years, 70 million. If Monty Williams doesn't sign a six year, $78 million deal. Probably not. Right. Probably I think not. he said, I, I think mean, he set the benchmark. Is, I think this number is specific because of that Monty Williams contract. Yeah. And, and uh, damn you, Monty Williams. Cause uh, now the bulls won't get, won't pay a coach uh, anything that they feel is anywhere near that, but uh, Steve no, <laughs> but no, I do. I do believe that it's because of that. I think you probably before Monty, I mean, what was he? He was 20 million more than any coach had gotten to that point. Right. Like something ridiculous. Like he probably would have been around. He still would have been the highest paid coach, but I don't think it's anything like this. Yeah. Monty Williams basically getting 13 million a year. Ty Lue's now going to get 14 million a year to coach, to coach a team. So just, you know, like mid-level exception. Money. I'm not going to lie. Let's be real. <laughs> Little bit of an undersell. Like you're For giving what? me, you're giving me $14 million a year. And I am legitimately 60 game or 50 games better than the guy <laughs> who, who got, 
who gets thirteen million dollars a year. Hey, I, they didn't I, they didn't I, know I, he I was gonna be that bad for... when they they didn't know he was gonna be that bad when he signed him. He was coaching the Suns before that, and the Suns were good. <sighs> listen, I'm just saying. I, I think coming to the table, I'd have been like, listen, I need twenty. <laughs> I need I need a two million for every I think you, ten I games think you, above the Pistons. I am. Yeah, I was gonna say you go you go into that negotiation with Monty Williams's record, and then you go in with Steve Ballmer's net worth. Just print it out on a sheet of paper and just slide it across the table. Just slide it across the table. I need twenty. Uh, it's just, it's like Shark Tank. It's like I am seeking a point zero zero one percent of the net worth. <laughs> Mark Cuban, what are you doing here? <laughs> For a 100% stake in the head coaching position of, the, of this and uh, in 5% of the sales of the wall. <laughs> I'll give you a 60% stake in analytics. <laughs> Micah Parsons, the Dallas Cowboys starred fenceman, showed up to Mavs versus Timberwolves game four in Dallas wearing a Luka jersey and Anthony Edwards' shoes. He got Anthony Edwards to sign the shoes afterwards. My question is, if you're the star player of the hometown team, the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, you come to a Dallas Mavericks game, the Mavericks probably invite you. They let you sit courtside. They give you the tickets, all that kind of stuff for Micah Parsons. My question is, how much of a party foul is it that he wore Anthony Edwards' shoes? If you're in the city of Dallas. What do they look like? Are they uh, like imagine shoes? Caleb? Imagine Caleb like Williams shoes? shows up to a Bulls game against the Pistons wearing Cade Cunningham's shoes. I mean, again, what do they look like? Like they're it, nice. It, they're, they're nice shoes, but like it's, he's it's wearing the other. Thing. Yeah, but I mean, listen. How many people were in New York back in the day going to Knicks games versus Jordan wearing Jordans? Jordan's a probably brand, a lot though. more. You probably even, a lot Jordan's more. Jordan's a brand though. You don't even know what Anthony Edwards' shoes look like. Well, I'm not a shoe head. I'm not. I'm not a guy that, that's sitting there. You're not and, a shooter, and you still know what Jordans look like. That's 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 permeated. I'm not gonna lie. Those those shoes pretty fresh. They're cool. Nah, I'm They're not. Cool. I'm not. I'm not mad at that. My co-host had a pair of them. My co-host on my show had a pair of them, slightly biased, and he threw them off the balcony when they, <laughs> they were about to face them, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, that's uh, that that's that's a waste of money right there. Uh, tell him what size he wear. What size? I'll, the hold size on. He I'll, wear? I'll, I'll 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 pull the curtain back. He went. And got them. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Cool. Okay. I was gonna say. I'm like, that's just a waste of money right there. That, that was unintelligent. Uh, no, I don't think it's but a But come foul. on, this is, this is a bad look. I mean, you're in it. So, like, it doesn't bother me. Like, I, I, I think that there's been a lot of people that have worn a different... Like, there's probably times where the Bulls were playing the Lakers and there were went, hundreds of, hundreds of went, people in the stands wearing Kobe's. He went out of his way to wear these shoes, though. Because you don't just wake up and go, hey, I'm going to wear these ants today. And do they go with the fit though? That's the thing. No, he's wearing a, like, wearing a Luca jersey and the pink oh, like oh, Anthony so the Edwards. Shoes, so the shoes don't even match. No, not color wise. I, oh no, maybe. he's being a troll then. No, okay, no, that's why. Right. Not, that's okay. Now you're being a troll. Okay. I didn't <laughs> I didn't know the shoes didn't match. I thought he had like a some blue and black on. Yeah, you know I mean, I thought he was thought he was vibing with it. That's a, okay, never mind. And no, he wilded. <laughs> no, you can you can see pictures of him. Uh yeah, so he literally no. just did it to get Ant to sign the shoes. That's kind of weird. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's kind of weird, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. That's that's a little weird. <laughs> is he fanboying over Anthony Edwards right now? Yes. That, is he, does he know he plays for the biggest so uh, the picture with him after, brand yeah, in he, sports? <laughs> he's wearing the Mavs white and green, like old school looking jersey, the Luca one, and he's he has Anthony Edwards shoes on. I cannot. Yeah, that's that's a that's a little that's a little trollish. That's a little trollish. I'm that's a wild one. I, they're blue, I, I'm, blue I'm on Anthony the Edwards now. shoes, by the way. They're they're blue with the green jersey. I'm like, I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, it's a little trollish. Just a little, just, just a little bit. Uh, last thing here, Bill Walton passed away this week. NBA legend, legend, also a legendary broadcaster. My question is, in full respect of Bill Walton, that he was excellent at both of these things. We know that he was one of the great NBA players of all time, one of the great broadcasters of all time. Count it up. What was he better at, player or a broadcaster in your mind? Here's the NBA resume. Hall of Famer, two-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA, two-time All-Defensive, two-time champion. Basically had like two of the greatest seasons in NBA history. Won a championship in one of those two seasons and then won another one with the Celtics when he was sixth man of the year. He was the MVP in one of those seasons. That was awesome. Dealt with a ton of injuries but is a Hall of Famer, incredible career. As a broadcaster, he may have like changed what you could do as a broadcaster. The way that he would just like 
say anything. Like the soliloquy is the word that was probably invented for what Bill Walton does as a broadcaster, like to make, to, to add color. He did exactly that on every single broadcast he brought. You knew that you were going to be entertained. You knew you were going to smile. You knew you were going to enjoy yourself listening to Bill Walton call a game. Was he better as a player or a broadcaster, Pat? This is tough. This is tough for me. But I'm going to say broadcaster. Wow. I'm going to say broadcaster it's because... MVP. I'm going to say broadcaster because... And I don't know if everybody knows this, but Bill Walton with Jason Benetti once called a White Sox game. Bill Walton, <laughs> just for context, is not a White Sox fan. I was going to say, did he know any of the players? Bill Walton... <laughs> it didn't matter. Does not watch baseball. <laughs> and so... In my time frame of being a Sox fan over the last 10 years, it has not been fun. That is one of the fondest moments for me because Bill Walton talked for nine innings, legitimately <laughs> nine innings straight. Yeah. Not once mentioned the baseball game. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> not one time did he break down what was happening on the field. Not one time did he slow down a story to stop for Jason Benetti to call the game. Not one time. <laughs> Did he say anything about the Chicago White Sox? And I believe they were playing the Rockies, so maybe that was the correlation because he was in Colorado. I Colorado don't know. Guy. But uh, I, I will say this about Bill Walton. To have the cachet and confidence in your own self to do a baseball game and not talk baseball for nine innings, <laughs> that's one of the greatest things that I've ever seen in broadcasting history. And... Uh, Blessings to the Walton family. Uh, prayers up to Bill to uh, to the Walton family and uh, prayers to Bill Walton. R I P R I P to Bill Walton, man. Has he ascended? He, he's ascended to that level. Where we can he, pray to. Hey, We're gonna pray to Bill Walton now. Hey, prayers up to Bill Walton, man. Shout out to Bill. <laughs> prayers out to the family. Can you imagine a, sending a prayer to Bill Walton? He's just like, oh, look at this. This is pretty good right here. I got to use this as a story. <laughs> At least he's got a crowd around him, just like enjoying what he's doing, enjoying some good music, good, good sports, good fun, all that. Uh, great stuff. There you go, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us on Locked On NBA, and uh, we'll have another show tomorrow covering. We got daily shows that cover your team. Check out Locked On Mavs. Check out Locked On Bulls all throughout the off season, and hopefully the playoffs in the final.